Hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Have I got a game for you? Uh, now, you may be sitting there thinking, I hope it's not another Vienna. I'm bored of the Vienna. Well, in the famous words of Oscar Wilde, up yours. If you're bored of Vienna, you're bored of life. Okay, so he actually meant London. He actually said London. But hold on to your wobbly bits because this is a ride. My opponent's rated uh, around 1440. Okay, so a bit lower rated than me. But holy smokes. Okay, we enter the Vienna game. Knight to f6. We have the Vienna gambit. So I play f4. And there are really only two things that you can do because the knight has nowhere to go. I, I'm sorry, if after pawn takes and pawn advances, knight has nowhere, no safe squares. They're all covered. Either the knight has to retreat or you do what my opponent did, which is actually an inaccuracy. And um, blocks with the queen. And you do the same, unpinning the pawn. So now the knight is again on prees and has to retreat all the way back to g8. And now the move is knight to f3. This is very important. I say this all the time. Prevents a queen from coming in here with check. And now this is not looking good. This is very, very poor from Black's perspective. Because, and if you're a Vienna player, you've got to get this into your notes. Knight to d5. Okay. Now it didn't look too bad at first sight. Okay. We're hitting the queen. And we're also hitting c7 with the famous fork of fun. Now, so the queen wants to defend this poor day. Um, and she can. Okay. Now, this is a terrible move. But actually, so are these. Whichever way the queen goes, you go, I ain't bothered. I'm capturing the pawn anyway. You're in check. I'm also hitting the rook. And then your opponent has to think, because if the queen takes the knight, e takes d6 with the discovered check by the queen, and we win the queen. Even if the queen comes back to block, pawn takes that. Okay. So here my opponent did the smart thing and did this. Okay. Now I actually have a, a moment. Yeah, I could grab the rook straight away, or. I could also grab the pawn on, on here, right? So I thought, you know, you have to think this through. If I take the pawn, because he could take my pawn, right? So if he takes my pawn, but then my knight comes in, and my, my knight's in an aggressive place, okay? Um, if I take his pawn, out comes the bishop. So which is best? So in the end, I decide just grab the rook. Okay, so we're a rook up. My opponent plays his knight out here, and I respond with d4. Okay, so important move d4 in the Vienna Gambit. You want to recapture this pawn. Um, d d3 is sometimes also played if you've got pawns on the light squares, but no. d4 here. And what I'm wanting to do is I want to grab the pawn, I want to castle, get my rook onto d1, and take advantage of the fact that my opponent's king and queen are lined up. The thing that I failed to appreciate fully at this point in the game was that my king and queen are also in front of my queen in front of my king as well. So here he takes the pawn and I decide to recapture with the pawn opening up this, right? So that I can now capture this and I've got my plan all in place. I'm going to go and just win, right? Easy, squeezy. My opponent now plays the ridiculous looking bishop d6. And I look at this for all of 9.5 seconds and think, you donkey, right? That's just more free stuff for yours truly. Thank you very much indeed. And then my opponent goes, ha ha, but now the joke's on you because I'm having your queen in it. And I go, oh. Right now, it would have been great if I could just sacrifice my bishop here, and if pawn takes, then the rook's blocked. But I can't do that because if I put my bishop here, rook takes, defended by the pawn, and queenie still falls. I can't block with the knight because rook just takes that again. 
It's horrible. Okay, so what do I do? Take the free pawn with my bishop. At least this pawn is defended now. He's going to take my queen. Oh no, my queen. Right? And I recapture the rook, and I'm somehow I'm five points material of material in front because he's now got no rooks. I've lost my queen and two pawns. He's lost both rooks and a bishop and three pawns. Somehow, I'm a piece, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm way in front. Anyway, so he brings his knight out, and I grab the opportunity to castle. And this pawn is a real problem right now. Right. He's got, only got one minor piece developed. His king's already moved. King and queen are in line. Okay. This is just... This is what... This is like the sharpest thing in the world, this game. Honestly. Okay. Out comes his knight. So maybe... I don't know what... I don't know what he's doing. Maybe... Well, he just needs to develop, right? He needs to get his, his stuff out on the board and try and do something. I've always got this. This is the problem. that My knight can always come here and covering a load of space. But you should see the finish on this game, right? So my bishop now flies out to b5, pinning this knight against the queen, okay? Also potentially opening up this um, file for my rook. This move I don't really care for. I don't really see much point in that. <clears throat> and now I come in, and now it's just the case of you know, this is now a dogfight. I need to bring all my stuff buzzing around King Kong at the top of the Empire State now, okay? We're taking advantage of the fact that this knight is pinned. This knight cannot capture that knight. Okay, so I'm coming in, hitting the queen, hitting the knight, hitting this pawn. What does he do? Moves the queen to here. I mean, this is a great, I mean, honestly, set up this position on a board and think how, because it's like, there are so many moving parts. It's like a, a five by five by five Rubik's cube. It's like, how, how on earth do you unpick this kind of scenario? So I now think for 38 seconds and I decide that what I need to do is just keep on the pressure, right? I've got a lot of things in my favor. My king is castled. He's on a dark square. There's no dark square bishop. I've got one, two, three, four minor pieces and the killer pawn of doom all swarming around my en enemy's stuff. This is he's like fly strike. This, this, you know, but it doesn't, it's, it all stands for nothing unless I can keep the pressure on, right? I'm only five materials in front, but my opponent has a queen. There's plenty of opportunity for me to get bitch slapped here. Okay, so the move I play now is that move that we mentioned, knight to c7, protected by the pawn, hit the queen, right? Have I calculated what is going to happen next? Hell no. I haven't the foggiest, right? But what I do know is this knight was doing nothing there. Okay, it was guarding this square, but it was already guarded by that pawn, so it doesn't do anything, right? Now it guards this square and this square, okay? So queen's got to do something. Now, I did see this. Right, I did have to calculate this. Queen takes a2. And now <clears throat> I knew that I could like attack the king. Now what I can't do is this with check. That's what I'd love to do. But the queen's still on that diagonal. She just comes straight back and captures the knight. Right? So now bishop c4. Hit the queen. Um, but also, importantly, we've got this kind of triangulation here. Right, the knight is defending that, is attacking that, and defending the bishop, and adding a second attacker if the bishop takes there. Okay, so the queen comes in here. I'm unconcerned. Dodge all, out of the way. Queen comes back here with check. Unconcerned again. Pawn c3 blocks. Now, winning in two moves from here. My opponent's next move, hitting my bishop. Okay. Now, obviously, the next move, knight d7 check uh, sorry knight f7 check king now moves to here and then i find bishop to e6 is actually checkmate and it's one of the most beautiful things that you will see a uh, absolute thing of beauty this pawn defends the knight knight defends the bishop knight defends that pawn bishop defends that pawn 
The king has nowhere to go and it's all over. And I just had to write OMG in the comment to my opponent. Good game, GG, buddy. Um, and you know, he did so well to come back and punk me and, and win my queen with that move. Just goes to show guys, you know, whenever you get a decisive advantage in the game, be extra careful, if anything, right? Particularly if your opponent seems to do something dumb and hand you material on a plate. Always be suspicious. I need to be more suspicious in future, but it's got me over 15.50 just again. Um, loving my rapid today. Tell you what, blitz sucks. Rapid is the way to go. All right, so thought you'd enjoy that one. Thanks for watching. See you soon.